All right, so we'll do a little a little logic housekeeping here again, just a little optimization, just to reinforce this idea that we probably don't want to be casting array constantly. Now, with one enemy AI object running around, uh, it's not a big deal. But if we had you know forty or fifty of these guys running around casting lots of rays uh, and looking for multiple players, that could be something that could you know start to tax uh, a system, particularly if we're running on a mobile device, and so. We just want to account for switching on and switching off the ray, and we'll just, um, for now, we could, you know, use different methods um, to uh, to track this. But I'm just going to hardwire a relationship really quickly, um, and we'll use the range finder uh, as the the um, uh, the trigger here. And the idea is that if we're out of range, uh, we'll turn off uh, our raycast, and if we're in range, we'll we'll flip it on. Um, so. Our line of sight is the thing that's casting our ray, and I'm going to use um, global events in order for uh, to use this. Now we could, you know, set up bools just like we did and, and constantly check to see whether we should be um, casting um, a ray or not, and that would be a, a good method. In fact, maybe I'll, I'll mock up an alternative that uses that method. But I want to start to um, address this. Um, sending uh, global events because it's a pretty powerful thing, and we'll utilize this quite a bit. Um, in other mechanics. And so on my line of sight, I'm going to create a new event and I'm going to create two different events. Um, I'll simply call this, um, let me make this capital, turn on ray and turn off ray. And so I have two new events. Uh, I'm going to mark these both as global events. So I'll just check these. And by checking these as global events, that means that um, other state machines can broadcast uh, to these events. And I'm going to add these as global events. Um, so um, what I want to do is if, if we get a call to turn off a ray, I want to end up in this ray is off state. So I'll right click, add a global transition, and turn oop, of ray. I don't want to turn of ray. Let's see if we can update this. No, I can't. One of the downsides of uh, global events is once we once we create them, maybe I can turn it off and see if I can turn off. Right, there we go. Then I'll flip it back on as global. Now I'll have two different events that are popping up here and I might wanna go into my events manager and clear one of those out um, so as not to confuse myself. I should have caught that typo uh, first. Um, anyway, we got two global events here. The ray is off, I'm gonna right click and add a global event. We'll turn off ray. And you can see we get this transition event that shows up a lot like the start event. And this is a, a visual indicator that we're, um, we've added this as a global event. Um, so two things need to happen. We need to right click and add transition as a global event. That'll get the transition event to show up from the top uh, regardless of any other transition events. For example, um, I'll switch this in a moment, but if I were to turn Ray on over here, you can see that adding it as a global event it shows up up here. So I'm going to right click, delete this transition event, um, and we'll add it over here currently with the start state. So uh, I'll right click, add a global transition, we'll turn Ray on. Now you'll notice that we, we at the start, of our state machine or when our game object, our, our game starts to run. Right now our start state is here. Um, and this dumps it into a state that's casting array. We don't want that. Um, but when we call the turn ray on event, it flips it on. It's not necessarily in our line of sight. We'll assume that it's out of line of sight and then we'll let the ray test and, and let it run its logic. But we want to start with our ray turned off. So we'll come over here. We'll set this as the start state. Um, so now when we start our line of sight game object, we're stuck in our ray is turned off. So we're not getting uh, any ray cast. Okay. And so let me just jump over here to our enemy. We'll lock this. I'll select my player. And so when I'm debugging over here, currently the way that we have this set up, let me just go to line of sight here and lock this and back to player. As we move this around, um, you can see that because we're stuck in our ray is off, we're never going to cast array, and then we're never going to determine, uh, we're never going to switch 
um, the line of sight on currently, right? So there's no way, based on the logic we just set up, that we're going to get line of sight set to true. Okay, we'll fix that in just a moment. So we've kind of deactivated our line of sight temporarily, okay? But what we'll do is we'll borrow our range finder and say when we're within range, let's send an event to turn on array. Uh, when we're outside of range, let's send an event to turn off the array. Okay, so we'll do that now. I'll jump into range finder, make sure we unlock, just refresh here. So when we're out of range, um, what we wanna do is we wanna go find the state machine category and we want to send an event. So we'll find a, the send event action. We don't want to send event to ourself. Uh, what we want to do is we want to target our line of sight FSM. So we're going to, um, we could target a game object or a game object FSM. In this case, um, I want to suggest that we shoot for the game object, uh, uh, this, this game object specifically. We're not going to use the owner. We'll drag in line of sight. Uh, once we have line of sight uh, selected, uh, we'll choose global events. And this is, see, we're getting that typo that I introduced before. Um, so we're out of range, and so we want to make sure that we turn off ray. Okay, we don't need to do this every frame. We'll do the same thing over here. We'll go to send event, game object. We don't want to use the owner. We'll use line of sight. Uh, and then at that game object, we'll broadcast turn on ray. So that any state machine that has that, or any, yeah, any state machine that has these as global events um, will be flipped. There's only one state machine, but we could, we could have handled this a slightly different way. We could have targeted specifically uh, the, the FSM on the game object, but we should achieve the same results here. Uh, and we'll confirm that by going to line of sight. And then we should watch these two switch back and forth um, based on our proximity, okay, based on our range. So I'll hit the play button. I'm gonna lock this to make sure that we're focused over here. Uh, I'll grab the player and if this is set up properly, yep, so you can see that when we move into our range. Um, it turns on line of sight. In this case, we happen to have line of sight, so we'll back out. But if I enter a range and I don't have line of sight, you can see that we've turned on the ray. So we're casting a ray right now, um, but we don't have line of sight. So that logic is still working and still holding up just the way it should. Okay, so we're in range, we have line of sight. Um, currently, we're outside the field of view, so we could technically you know, set up some logic to say, well, we don't really care about casting a ray unless we know we have field of view and we have range, but we'll just use the range as the criteria right now. And that, that looks pretty good. That's working the way that we want to. Um, so we can, we can kind of uh, move in and out uh, of range um, to establish um, our ray cast. Okay, so um, we're in pretty good shape here. The only other thing that we're gonna do now that we're switching our ray on and off uh, with our little housekeeping, is that I'm gonna jump into uh, our enemy with AI. This is the place where we uh, have our bools. And I should have, uh, I should have uh, uh, demonstrated this as well. Let me select the player. Um, but we now have all of these are, are set back to true. Um, of course, we can test all the, the three different conditions. Um, and so what we're going to do is we'll go to the enemy AI uh, and we'll use this as a, just kind of a basic AI manager. Now we could, we could make this way more nuanced, but I'm simply going to um, uh, create two different states. We're going to have um, an unaware. So the enemy is unaware of uh, the player. And then we'll have unaware state. Okay, so two simple states. And we're going to switch back and forth uh, between these states uh, based on these bool conditions. Okay, so uh, the unaware state uh, and the aware state will just use a switch event, just a real simple event, call it switch, pass back and forth between the two. 
Um, but I'm going to do a bool test. So we'll find that in logic. Um, and I don't want to actually, I'm not going to use a bool test because a bool will test one uh, variable and, and, and or, or one bool. And that can be useful, but there's some other things. Um, for example, we could test if all the bools are true. So in this case, that's going to be valuable because if we have field of view and we have line of sight and we're within range, all three of those things are true, we'll say become aware. Um, so I've added the bool all true. We want three bool variables to test. And the first one is going to be our field of view. Second one is our line of sight. And the third one is going to be our range. If all are true, we'll send event, we'll create a new event, and we'll simply make a switch transition. So we're switching states, or we could call it next, or whatever we want. So we've become aware. So once we have all three of these things, we're aware. Now, just like all true, um, we could do uh, none true, or um, we could do uh, any true. Really what I want is, um, let's see, is there an option for, all right, I was having trouble finding the uh, bool none true. Um, for whatever reason. So uh, currently our logic is set up to where we, um, if everything is true, we'll pass it over to aware. Um, and then for now, we'll simply say, if all of these uh, become false, um, then uh, we will become unaware. So this is a pretty strict requirement um, for it to become unaware, but that's fine. So we'll switch this back and we can we can determine what our criteria is a little bit later. But um, currently we have unaware and unaware maybe we'll set to yellow and aware we'll set to, oh, let's say blue or red and green again. Um, but we have unaware and aware. So currently, um, if everything's true, so we should start off, we're going to remain in the unaware state because we're out of range. Uh, but once it gets all three conditions met, our enemy should become aware. So let's try this out. So I'll lock this. Uh, my inspector is still locked with enemy. Select the player, hit the play button. And again, I'm paying attention to uh, the state machine uh, along with um, uh, debugging the criteria over here. So if we pass into uh, aware, um, I was expecting to see it switch and it didn't. And the reason why is because I forgot to check every frame. Um, so in other words, it only checked that condition on the first frame. So not continuously. So let me correct for that. So unaware, we'll do a bool check every frame. Uh, we'll do the same thing during aware. And let's try that again. So currently player is unaware. Player is now aware. Um, the player remains um, aware because it still has uh, field of view and it still has line of sight. So in order to break this, we got to kind of move over here. And eventually, once we get out of the angle of view and line of sight, um, it, it kicks it back to unaware. So if we move back into the range, uh, it's still unaware because it doesn't have field of view and line of sight. Okay, so... Uh, right now, we have pretty strict requirements. Everything has to be true for it to become aware. Everything has to be untrue um, for it to um, uh, become unaware. But we could, you know, we could refine that uh, a little bit more. Um, but basically, right now, what we could do um, is we could use this as um, establishing whether uh, we have some basic AI behavior or some basic navigation that we want to happen. Um, based on whether we're unaware or aware. Uh, we'll set up a nav mesh agent um, and, excuse me, we'll bake a nav mesh uh, inside our environment and we'll set up a nav mesh agent on our enemy AI um, and have it kind of randomly wander around or patrol some areas um, based on a nav mesh. And then if it becomes aware of our player, uh, we'll set it to... Uh, for now, we'll set it just to kind of follow the player so, so um, we know that it becomes aware. Um, but again, we could change that criteria to say, you know, assume a more strategic position and start throwing projectiles or, 
you know, instantiate some flowers and go give it to the player. Who knows? You know, whatever that mechanic is that we're trying to um, uh, to establish when the player be or the uh, enemy becomes aware of the player, we could we could run that. And of course, we could branch it too to say, okay, the player became aware. Excuse me. The enemy became aware of the player, and so now we want to say maybe there's a um, a, a thirty to uh, you know thirty percent chance that it's going to be very aggressive, or thirty percent chance that it's going to run and hide, um, and we can kind of divide that up um, uh, depending on what kind of behaviors we want to manage. Um, but we'll do that in the next presentation. We'll set up a basic nav mesh. We'll get our enemy. Um, moving according to the nav mesh, and then we'll set up um, some basic criteria uh, based on the AI that we've established. So we'll do that in the next presentation.